David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about a uh, recent test we had in CE 3303 solids. This one we're going to do a shear and bending moment diagram. And we're called on to show all significant values of shear and moment, including important distances and degrees of curvature. So we're given, I guess it got cut off. We were given on the problem the vertical reactions of R A Y equals three kips positive R B Y is equal to eighteen kips. So I want to show those, and those are the vertical reactions. So I've got three kips up at A and 18 kips up at B. I want to get everything in Cartesians. I have this sloping load, this 15 kip sloping load here. I want to get that in Cartesians. It's at a 3, 4, 5 angle. 3, 4, 5 means the 5 is the 15, so I've got really nine kips up and I've got 12 kips to the right. Um, once I've got that I'm really, to, really ready to go by the graphical method which is pretty straightforward. We'll start off with the shear and we remember that the shear is a uh, got a couple of three rules really that apply to it. Concentrated loads make it jump. It's equal to the area under the load diagram and the slope of the shear diagram is equal to the value of the load diagram. Starting from the left end, first we better put in our units which are kips for shear. We've already got plus and minus above the lines plus, below the lines minus. At the left end, we have a 57 kip foot concentrated moment, but that's not shear, that's a moment, so it doesn't do anything. So we start off with a zero shear up until we get to that concentrated load at point A, which causes the diagram to jump in that direction by that amount, three. Then there's nothing happening between uh, point A and the 15 kip sloping load. So this is at plus 3. At the 15 kip sloping low, we have 9 kips up. And that adds, so I really keep a running tally of my shear over here. I've got 0, then I plus 3. That load gives me 3. Then I add 9 more due to the vertical component of the sloping load, which puts me at 12. So up 9, which takes me to 12. Same direction as that concentrated load. Then I want to use, I have a distributed load starting here, 3 kips per foot. And I need to consider the fact that change in the shear diagram is the area under the load diagram. So the area of this distributed load is... 3 times 10 and it's negative 3 because it's going down so it's negative 30 kips. So between that point where the distributed load starts and I'm at a shear of 12 I want to subtract 30. Keeping my running tally over here it puts me at negative 18. So the slope of the shear diagram is the value of the load diagram. It's negative 3 kips per foot. So that means it's going to go down 3 kips per foot from positive 12 to negative 18 at support at B. Something like that, trying to draw it to scale. It's a 0 degree curve on the load diagram, so it's going to be a 1 degree. It's going to be a negative slope, so it's going to be sloping down from 12 to negative 18. And I want to find where that point is because that's going to be important for my moment diagram. 
Okay, my starting off at 12 and I'm going down three kips per foot. So that puts me, if I'm at 12 and I'm going down three kips per foot, it takes four feet to do that. So that makes this distance x of four where the shear goes to zero. Just taking that value and dividing it by the slope of the shear diagram of the load diagram or the value of the load diagram. And I can see also I keep going down six more feet at three kips per foot. That's going to take me to negative 18, which is confirmed by my reaction, my drawing. Shear drawing closes. So the slopes of the curvatures here are 0, 0, 0, and 1 degree of curvature. So there's a good quick shear diagram. Nice and easy. And I'm ready to move to my moment diagram. So I've got the same kind of relationships between shear and moment that I had between shear and load. My units are now kip feet for here for the moment. And so I've got a concentrated moment at the end. That causes my moment diagram to jump. Starts off at zero and I always have a hard time remembering what direction of moment is that. So I draw the, make this little cut here and assume a positive moment by my sign convention and I can see it's the opposite direction or they're both going in the same direction so that means the actual moment has got to be negative 57 so I'm going to start off at negative 57 and then there's no change between that point and the support at there's no shear this value on the shear diagram is zero so there's no area under the shear diagram. So I'm just going to stay at a constant negative 57 all the way to support at A. So it jumps down to negative 57 by the concentrated moment, stays the same all the way to A. Then I'm going to start changing because I have some area under the shear diagram. It's going to... the change in the moment diagram between the two points is the area under the shear diagram. So this area here is 3 times 5 and it's a positive. So that makes 15. So keeping a running tally of my moment, I'm starting off at negative 57 and then I'm going to add 15 to it. Puts me at negative 42. It's a zero degree curve there, so it's a positive slope, positive three, and it's going to go up 15 to negative 42. So that value is negative 42. Then my slope's going to increase, still going to be positive, but it's going to be a lot sharper. And it's going to be the area under the load diagram is the change in the moment diagram, under the shear diagram, excuse me. The area of that rectangle is 12 times 6, positive 72. Positive 72 is going to take me to positive 30 on the moment diagram. Something like that, kind of trying to draw it to scale. That's going to take me to 30. Once again, a straight line, a linear relationship. Then. I'm going to have some more positive area and I'm going to be slope, uh, sloping up but to decreasing slope and I'm going to be flat here where the shear is zero. So I want to figure out what the area is for the change in the moment diagram. The area of that is one half because it's a triangle. It's four feet and it's positive 12 which is going to be 24, positive 24. So I'm starting off at 30, I add 24 to that, and now I'm at 54, so that's going to be that. I'm starting off with positive slope right here at this point, positive 12 kip feet per foot, and I'm gradually going to zero slope. Then my curve is going to break over and I'm going to start having negative slope in this region because i got negative shear. 
And this is, should close. I'm at 54, which is the vertex. Now I'm going to go down by this area because it's a negative shear. So my area of that is a negative one half because it's a triangle. Or the negative is the, uh, the 18 kips per kip feet per foot. And if this is four feet and it's 10 feet from that point to B, then this has got to be six feet. So I'm at six. And that's sure enough equal to negative 54, which takes me back to zero. So the thing closes. I'm starting off with, neg with zero slope and I'm gradually getting negative and increasing negative. Over here I have the sharpest point and I, as I go to zero. So that's my moment diagram. Just need to draw in the degrees of curvature which is zero. And then note that this, this shear up here at zero curvature is not really a zero, it's just a zero value. So it goes to zero degrees in the next step. There we got one degree straight line, one degree straight line, two degrees uh, quadratic. And that is my shear and moment diagrams. Now the whole purpose of shear and moment diagrams is to get, enlarge them for a second, so you can see them. The whole point of shear and moment diagrams is to get maximum and minimums. So I just pick them off the curve. My maximum moment is either this value, negative 57, or this peak here, 54. It's obviously, obviously negative 57. My greatest shears are positive 12, negative 18. So negative 18 is the big one that controls. So my maximum shear is negative 18. Kips. I was asked for magnitude and sine, and my maximum moment is this negative 57 kip feet over here on the left end. And I was also instructed that the absolute magnitude can be the maximum can be minimum or I mean uh, negative or positive.